OMG, OMG, OMG. Welcome to OMG, the Omar Gale Radio Show. I'm your host, actress, Arthur, evangelist, and content creator. And I am super excited today because a girlfriend of mine, we've been friends for, I'm not going to date us, for a long time. <laughs> we, we actually met in Chicago years ago, and then both of us ended up moving to LA, and she's still in LA. Um, but I'm super excited because she is a, she has a wealth of experience. She's a bright ray of sunshine, always optimistic and full of hope. And when you hear her story, when you hear what she's lived through, when you understand some of the challenges and or um, obstacles that were in her path, you are going to be just as in love and amazed by her resilience as I am. So will you please be so kind to welcome to the conversation via a virtual hand clap from you guys, my good friend, Bernadette Speaks. Hey. <laughs> conversation, gorgeous woman. Oh, thank you, thank you, thank you. I'm so excited uh, to be here. Thank you. Thanks for having a yes in your in your spirit to to share. Um, and I know our topic today, you guys, is enough. And and let me give you a little bit about that. I'm enough because God is enough. That's where we're going with this. We want to unpack the layers of that. It's a it's a it's a heavy yet simplistic title. But once you get to see underneath these layers of my sister friend, you're gonna understand how she came to that conclusion and why we want to unpack that for you. So let's deep dive and jump right on in, Bernadette. Yeah, all right. So one of the questions that I love to <clears throat> ask um, my uh, guest so that our audience can kind of see behind the curtain is what was one of the most challenging moments you've experienced um, that, that, that could knock one person out? Some, someone may have not even been here to talk about it, uh, but your 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 faith and God um, mm. got you through it. Would you share that with our with our listeners and and those that may tune in? Sure, absolutely. Whew. Uh, well, let's see where I have some to choose from. <laughs> um, but I think I think because of what's going on in the world right now, one of the things that I went through and to keep who it is private, I'll just say one of my children yeah. um, struggle with mental illness. Still does, because it's an illness, it doesn't go away. Mm -hmm. um, and I think that that came out of nowhere, yeah. but, but when I was still enough to kind of process, I realized it had always been there. Mm. Okay. Um, it just looked different. Right. You know, and um, so do you mind if I kind of give like a little history about it? Is that okay? All right. So uh, when they were younger, um, they were a very happy, happy baby, happy child. Um, and I remember at a certain point where they kind of shifted and they weren't as happy. I don't, I cannot tell you what it was, what happened, nothing. It just, there was this shift. I noticed it. But I didn't, it's embarrassing to say, but I didn't, uh, I didn't think much of it, if that makes sense. You know, it's a child, they're growing up, they're figuring things out. So I'm thinking it's just a part of their process. Um, I end up, fast forward, it just gets kind of worse and they can't really function well in school and they would walk out because they would be overwhelmed and um, they had major anger issues. Uh, so it just continuously got um, worse. And I was dealing with it from a disciplinary perspective. Like my child has to grow. I have to discipline them. I have to give them this. I have to give them that. And 
you know, you don't always know, notice the signs. And I got advice from people who were in social services, people who were um, therapists. Um, and, you know, it was kind of like, oh, they'll be fine. You need to do this. You need to do that. So I would follow the advice. Fast forward, I ended up homeschooling them. And it was the worst time of our lives. It was the worst time for us in our relationship. Then I got sick. And it just escalated their um, emotional state. But I couldn't do anything about it at the time because I was sick. So when I got better is when kind of all hell broke loose. Um, and you feel like, what in the world is going on? Uh, and so I'm gonna fast forward because during that time when all hell broke loose, again, I'm told, well, they could have their their right brain, their right brain weak, left brain strong. Okay, so it's that. So then we go out of pocket thousands of dollars to get therapy. Right. We think it's going to be okay, right. right? And it is for a hot second, and then it's not. Mm -hmm. Then they go to high school, and then the high school is kind of like, what's what, what's happening? What's going on? Then they find a relationship with God and they get baptized. And, and I think, oh my gosh, you know, and they're happy. And then I'm not going to lie. I feel like as soon as the Holy Spirit entered my child, the demons went awry. Like they kind of attacked and that's when it got crazy. Mm. And that's when they were in the hospital and that's when they were hurting themselves. And that's when my house wasn't safe. And that's when I'm visiting my child at a facility. And that's when I'm watching all these other kids who are not being visited by their parents, you know? Um, because they were there for such a period of time that, and the, and the, the, the visiting hours are, um, a certain amount of time. So the same parents come and the same kids get their parents and the same kids do not. And so you're seeing kids from age like seven to 17, you know, who are not being visited. There's only a handful of kids that are being visited. So my heart is breaking. Right. And it's that moment that you realize, I don't know what I'm doing. Mm -hmm. And why am I this child's parent? And you start beating yourself up. And then you start like rewinding the tapes and playing back all the times that you should have, would have, could have. Right. And you didn't. Right. And you're also going through this time where one parent is bought into there's a problem and the other parent isn't bought into there's a problem. Because mental illness is not like cancer, or um, you can't see it the same. You can't, way. you can't see, it. or a cold where you can hear the cough and the sneeze, and right. you can't see it. And in one moment, a person can be okay, and in the next moment, they cannot be okay. Right. And so we go through this, and we start going to therapy. I start like doing all my homework, looking up things, realizing in the black community how this is such. Taboo. An important subject matter that is not dealt with because it's taboo, because for whatever reason, we just don't talk about it. We dismiss it. We don't think it's real. We, you know, we're so used to survival right. that we don't take the time to really delve into, is there a problem? I mean, I had to go and talk to my family and go, who has mental illness? We had my husband had to do the same thing, it and kind of crazy. right, right, and piece it together and go, oh, this makes sense now, yeah. you know, and even go within me and go, have I ever been depressed and didn't even know that's what it was? Right. You know what I mean? Like, not make things up, not put things on, but really take a a clear and concise assessment yeah. with with um, clinical help, meaning people that are in this field that can kind of guide you. And we thought the first incident was over and mm -hmm. our therapist said, no, it'll happen again. And sure enough, it did. Mm. It happened again. But this time I was calm. I knew what to do. Yeah, yeah, I was yeah. scared out of my mind, but I was sure. calm. It, and we took him back, you know, took, took them back to the hospital and, 
and and you know you you go through all that and you just go i i'm not equipped right right now it's the feelings of inadequacy it's the feelings of i'm your mom and i can't protect you um, right. it's the feelings of i should have known this why didn't i know this um, right why is this catching me off guard and then right. you compile on that the delicate balance of two parent households where one may and one may not recognize right. that it is what it is and so it's it's denial right. you know it, it, we're dealing with the same thing with the dementia with my mom so there's denial in some people and then there's also this bigger elephant shame yeah and that is what was weighted the heaviest was the shame was the what are people going to think what are, because the my, you know my child was like you know the generation of kids today they put everything on social media everything. they pour their heart out on social media yeah. and you're just kind of like okay dude you know you know girl or boy yeah girl or boy it doesn't matter yep. their their stuff is out there and there's and it's in the ozone even yep. if you delete their profile it's going to be there right so it was really like asking my okay what am i ashamed of you know what what am I, but it was what what do people think are they going to think i'm a good parent are they going to think this about my kid are they going to blah 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 you know are they going to want my to be are they going to want their kids to be around my kids or they you know will they have friends anymore blah 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 all this stuff goes through your mind and and it's been a journey uh, to find out what works, what doesn't work, uh, psychiatry, you know, clinical medicine, going the CBD, TAC route. Like it's just yeah. an ocean to, to navigate and swim in when you don't know how to swim. <laughs> like, I don't even have fins. I've never had a swimming class a day in my life. And you're throwing me in the deep end and I've just got to figure this out. Right. And so then you, so fast forward to today, um, they're doing great. Mm. Um, and they are realizing what their self care is mm. and they, they know that their therapist is right there for them, uh, to, at, when they need them, they're vocal about their needs. Mm. But what it showed me in that process was all my inadequacies all the cracks that were coming, that were being, sh that the lights were shining through, that God was carrying us the entire time. Mm. That God was navigating who I talked to, when I talked to, um, going, I don't know how to do this, communicating, I don't know how to do this. So I'm learning as you're learning, what, what, what do you need? What should I not do? You know, this, just this humility of who I am and yeah. where I am, has to be enough. Yes. Because I can't put on, I can't m pretend like I'm I know when I don't. Yeah. And it was in that process of realizing how much God was enough. Wow. Wow. That and you know, so, you know, there's a there's the word that I think those that are listening to us right now, people we struggle with the feelings of inadequacy daily. In a lot of cases, weekly, monthly, annually, um, because when something seems so mountainous or it seems so big or we can't wrap our brain around it, let alone our arms around it, it seems to overwhelm us to the point that we just get deduced. We get shrink, we shrink to this little bitty ball. But the reality is it is in our weakness that he gets to be strong. I was going to ask you, which you actually actually pretty much answered. I was going to say out of that 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 season of storm of dealing um with mental illness and and your lack of knowledge on it and then discovering all of that i was going to say to share with the listeners what you learned what was your biggest takeaway and i and and i guess a piece of that would be that god was carrying you and that god was navigating you to everybody you should see the research you should do the 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 therapy you should also uh seek for him and i'm sure therapy for the family because it's a part of understanding the struggle that helps us to relate to it that then helps us to be the best you know be of service to the person that's actually struggling so would you would is that an adequate statement was that was if that was the biggest lesson were there other lessons and things you learned along the way that you can share with our listeners so that they can get to that place called enough. 
Yeah, I think you hit it on the head. We learned all that, but we also learned um, that God, I feel like one thing that is ringing in my head when I think about it is that love is really the key. It's the glue. Mm -hmm. And it's, and yes, you love your family, but love of self, because you can go through hard times like this and the shame stays with you. The, the lack of forgiveness of yourself stays with you, right? Yeah. Um, it's just like having cancer where you go through, go through that, you get chemo, um, then you're cancer free, you ring the bell, you're in remission, yeah. but you still have this residue. Mm. People don't tell you about the residue. Right. The fact that you have to grieve the things that you lost while you were going through that. The fact that your body won't be the same. The fact that your mind, your spirit won't be the same. The way you view things, there will be triggers that you didn't have prior mm -hmm. to. Yeah. It's the same thing when you're going through a mental illness situation, because all you're thinking about is how do I deal with this, this disease right now? Yeah. And then when it gets to a place of let's say remission yeah then you're kind of like huh, you know you're you're oh, beat down and tired and that's yeah. when the that's when another demon can attach itself called you know um self-worth a lack of like your self-worth is ripped ripped to shreds yeah. because you're in overdrive trying to help your family member you know and when we went to into this pandemic mm -hmm love showed up because all of us were dealing with, you know, you're isolated, you're dealing with how, how different people react to COVID, right? And, mm -hmm. and the fear that, that is underlying or, you know, the decisions that friends make that now affect you and your family. Like it's so much, it's not just about being at home, the mm -hmm. financial weight that, that lays upon you. So it opens up mental illness right it, it can it can spew its ugly head or and and you don't know you have it right yes. and my child uh was the one that was like the healthiest mm. and the one that pointed things out within us and guided us and loved us like gave back to us what we didn't realize What's we had it. Yeah. Well, yeah, we didn't realize what was going on with each one of us. And it was beautiful because my husband was like, I need to go and apologize. Mm -hmm. I understand now mm -hmm. because he realized I'm not doing well. Right. right. You know, and and it's not like the level of what our child went through, right. but it's still this thing I of know. you're not yourself. Yes. And you're not yourself. Your mind's not yourself. You have no no, you know, you, you're just kind of like, I don't have any motivation. I don't, I, I know I need to do stuff. And then you want to beat yourself up because you didn't get it done. Yes. Yeah. There's but it was, there's, there's a merging of time. Time is, time is like cells in the air. You can't even see it. It's <laughs> right. Just, it's, it's gone. You right. Just, okay. What day is it? What's, what's the month? It has caused so many people to be knocked off their rhythm. But I will say this, we've discovered in this household, introverts are thriving. Oh, yes. This is this is a time for introverts. I'm like having a party by themselves. It is really, and, and, and I'm an extrovert. You know this. <laughs> it's, and, the, and the interesting thing is I thought I would really feel like I was you know, in a cage. You get what I'm saying? I thought I was going to feel like I need to break out because I'm that horse, right? As, right. Long as, you keep, as long as you don't lock the gate and you let me roam free, I'll always come back in the gate, right? So I just thought, okay, I'm going to be like a, a lion just going back and forth. When am I going to get out? When am I going to Right. But what it birthed in me was creativity. So for some extroverts, if you are also creative, you'll find places to share that creativity and therefore feed the beast. Yeah. But it's beautiful that your son was able to, your child was able to ID um, what was not right with you guys. You get what I'm saying? Because he had sat in that seat before. And so yeah. he had a unique perspective. Yeah. He had a unique uh, front row seat to what it is, what it could feel like, what it's, 
and 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 the reality that you all were able to say wow and then your husband say oh i need to apologize because you you then get to feel the discomfort of a position that someone can't just turn off when we're out of quarantine right 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 like we're in it because of quarantine but there are people out there that are in it whether it's quarantine or not and they're learning how to live with it and i think that it's made me uh, it's made, allowed our whole family to be so much more compassionate yeah. non-judgmental yes um open uh mm -hmm. to understanding um and even like even in discussions of the cbd thc route um Which is and Huge topic because a lot of people don't believe in it and right. like, why would you do this? And right. I mean, how did you feel about that? How did you uh, stay focused or remain vigilant in whatever it's going to take to assist my child? I'm going to make sure I do it as a believer. You know, right. and I have you, uh, you know, we're believers here. So people struggle with that. You know, can you share right. some on? Well, it was one doctor who's a Christian that wrote a book about yes. marijuana. Yeah. So yes. I read that. That was yes. the first thing. The, the, I think the documentary of that, Arthur, is on Netflix. Yes. And I read it. And uh, and so that was my first sign, like, okay, God. The second, the second was just doing my own research, talking a lot, going to distilleries, talking to people. My cousin actually um, has one of his own, talking to him, um, allowing my child to do their own research. Yeah. ask them questions. I want, my goal was, I want to empower you because you have to live with you. At the end of the day, when you raise children, you want them to fly, fly, right. And, and be confident in how they're going to soar in this yeah. world. Right. Enable them. Right. And right. And so, it, and I might not agree. We might not agree with every decision they make and that's okay because they have to, they have to, what I call, um, fall forward. I don't, mm -hmm. I don't believe in failure. I just believe in you fall forward and you trip and you get up and you do it again, you know? And so for, for them, it was, it was figuring that out. And, and just all I asked was don't, don't lie. C clearly communicate. Um, and show me the research of why you're making these choices. Yeah. And they would. And and there were some decisions that were made that I didn't necessarily agree with. Um, and I would come back and I would come back with my own, this is why I don't agree with it. Yeah. And then I would leave it. Like mm -hmm. I just want, I just want to give this to you. You let me know what you think. He, you know, and it was interesting just just kind of going, um, kind of being still again and going, okay. <laughs> it's very scary being a parent, you know, it's, but you realize God allows that gift of parenting to show you what you're not. Yeah. But the, but in what you're not is what you are, if that makes sense. Like yeah. I would never want to, to know that I can do it all because the, the, the beautiful imperfection of me shows me what I can do because of God, what I can handle because of God, what I don't know how to do and God tells me to do it and I, and I trust it and then I go do it and then I see how it turns out. It's kind of like um, my directing. I never thought I wanted to be a director in this industry. I, I always thought I'd just be an actor. I just didn't have any ambition to be a director. Mm -hmm. I became a director. And I can honestly say in every single job I do, I never know what I'm going to do. I, I don't, my actors always go, I always go, guys, I don't know what I'm going to do, but you'll know. And it never fails. I'll be asleep. God will give me a vision. I'll wake up. I'll say, okay, so it's this. Okay. And just instinctively, I go do it. And I have seen beautiful things created because of that obedience of just following. And I'm realizing that I don't have a degree in directing. I don't have. I, I don't have a degree in filmmaking. I don't. I don't have any of those things. So credential wise, I don't have it. Right. right? right. All I have is me, my creativity, my, my what God has given me, and God. That's it. That's really all I have. Right. With, with what enough? Enough. 
right? And so what happens is God has allowed me to see how things that came from some an imperfect place yeah. become perfect yeah. or become permanent, right? Uh, like, and so when you create something, it's beautiful. My The work that I've been able to create has been beautiful. The actors I've been able to work with have done beautiful work. My family is now on a level of intimacy out of the imperfection of not knowing, not knowing how we we're going to do it, but just going, okay, that's how you want us to do it. Okay. then we're going to do it. Or, or being patient enough to go, they don't get it yet. Like in case with my husband, and then he gets it. And there's this beautiful intimacy and connection that was just as at the perfect time, yeah. you know, that was needed at just at that time. That our child, needed, yes, our child needed to hear that mm -hmm. to feel like, right. you know, and right. exhale. You know what I mean? Yeah. Yeah. And so you start to realize, like, I don't have to be all that I think I'm supposed to be that actually who I am, what I don't know, what I do know, what I will learn, what I will gain. Yeah. Is enough. This is freedom for someone. This oh is my gosh. right here for someone. You, you, you made the phrase, my beautiful imperfection shows me who I am in God. What a simplistically profound statement, because it is in our fractured, broken, unknowing, not I'm the smartest kid in the room, not I have all of the answers that actually forces us in a healthy way to hone in on the one who is all knowing, who mm -hmm. is all seeing, who is omniscient, omnipotent, omnipresent. When we have these moments where we're trying to be the perfect person in the room, the yeah. perfect parent, the perfect wife, the perfect employee, the perfect Christian, the perfect whatever. That's yes. really walking in a vanity and a false witness of what we really are. Yes. Because yes. In the in the humble, in the humble stance of falling under and surrendering to God. Even if we're skilled in an area, professional in an area, uh, proficient in an area, that's yes. not talking about your occupation. We're talking about your position. Yes. And in this position as a Christian, which you so wonderfully stated, you realize that if I can't keep all the balls in the air, it doesn't mean that I'm lacking um, to the point that I'm I'm inadequate. It, right. It, it means that. For this particular time and this particular season, with these particular amount of balls in the air, I can't do all of this. Right. <laughs> There's nothing wrong with admitting that we can't. Because right. without him, we can do nothing. Any I can't wake up without him. Right. Right. So why is it okay for us to know we can't wake up without him? We can't make oxygen. Uh, uh, right. uh, yeah. I mean, if, and during COVID, we're really realizing how important oxygen is. Right. We can't breathe without him. I can't move my legs without him. Right. Speak without him, hear without him, think without him. So why would I think I could parent without him or be a wife without him or, 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 or focus on a career without him? Yes. Yes. And yet, right. he says, you can't do it without me. But I need you to know you're missing nothing. You're right. Nothing. Right. God fills in all the cracks. And I keep seeing that over and over and over. And you know, when when because we're in an industry that makes you feel like you gotta be this, the yeah. self-tapes have gotta look like that, and the lighting has gotta be this, and the, the you know what I mean? Like every every aspect of this industry is always making you feel like what you're not. Yes. You know, that you're striving to to put out the dollars to become, right? Uh, um, you know, like, no, I gotta change my hair. No, I gotta, yeah. uh, 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 you know, um, it's, 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 it strips you. Yes. And you're like, I can't help, I got some wrinkles on my forehead. You know what I mean? Like, like but you don't wanna, right. you don't right. wanna admit we're aging. We lie about our age for right. years. 
Right. Because you don't want them to not cast you in something if you look younger. Right. You don't, you don't even broadcast when you have those milestone birthdays. Whoa, Lord forbid somebody would have wanted you to play 35 and you told them you were 65, you know? Right. Right. <laughs> right. And so you're just kind of like, and it's, it strips you, you know, it strips you. Yeah. But um, I think the older I've gotten, the less tolerance I have for just being, not being authentic. Yeah. you know, and being okay in my skin and, you know, not feeling like I got to be perfect and not feeling like I can't make a mistake and not, you know, it's just crazy. But, but I have lived a lot of my life that way, you know, early and just now going, it is okay. And I am, I am so good with who I am. And it's not an arrogant way, but it's just in a, I always want to learn. I always want to grow. And it definitely, when you get older in the industry, you start to feel like, is it too late? Yeah. And God always shows you it is never too late. Thanks, Sarah, My and the Bible. There, and, and that's the other half. I want you to kind of talk about that a little bit, because I believe that a lot of our listeners are actually, you know, they think, you know, is it too late to start something? Is it too late mm -hmm. to continue with this? Um, have I passed my peak? Um, uh, uh, you know, I should have done this when I was 20. I should have done this when I, I was 30. And I want you to speak about the seasonings of life, how the seasonings of life experiences actually can be just the right recipe for a comeback, for a reinvention, for a, um, a, a show up again. Because, you know, I know Bernadette Speaks was on Steppenwolf stage, two stages at the same time. <laughs> I can't even do this. What is it? Give me one of the names. Oh, oh my gosh, no. Like, I'll just say that the play was no Matemba. <laughs> so so here you are on two major stages in Chicago, and then you got cast to to be in a film with Sidney Portier. I believe that was when you got cast to do like two circles. Oh my gosh, yeah, it was right after that. Yes. And so 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 there was this huge breakout and then you moved to LA like we all did cuz you know. Like we all did. Right? <laughs> That's where you go. <laughs> and 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 then there are hills and there's lows and there's valleys, there's ebb and there's flow. And not that we ever question should we be there cuz we were what you would call a big fish in a medium pond in Chicago. We were hot. We were doing our thing, our voiceovers, our commercials. We were, we were. We moved to LA. We were like, oh, wow. We're in an ocean. Ocean. We were, <laughs> we were in a pond doing good. We were the big, we were the big dogs. Now we moved to an <gasps> ocean where there's thousands of big dogs and we are the tadpoles. We're yeah. The eggs of the tadpoles. Yes. Oh my gosh. Yes. So yes. to see you, you know, guest starring and doing recurring roles and now directing, you know, is it's like you are seasoned with all of these rich experiences that have now afforded you an opportunity to bring not just your talent and ability, but your wisdom and the value of experience to this new party. Yeah. So, so, so talk a little bit about that because I know that there are those that are listening in that just feel like, Again, they're not enough. Um, they didn't do enough early on. Right. They, they waited too long to get started. Yeah. Let, remind them how nothing's ever wasted. All right. Before Bernadette answers that question, I want to let you know you're going to catch the answer on part two. So join us here next Thursday. Tune in, lean in, and listen up at four o'clock. Pacific Standard, 6 o'clock Central, and 7 o'clock Eastern. Of course, you can catch the OMG Omar Gale Radio Show on Thursdays at uptomeradio.com. Catch my podcast anywhere you listen to podcasts by searching Up To Me Radio and OMG. I can't wait to give you the answers to the question you've been wanting. Everyone likes to be heard and then listened to. So we want you to set your dial to open.